Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Oscar Madrigal, and I'm here to talk about what SEL is, um, social emotional learning. So first, I want to give you guys a little bit of information about myself. Um, I run a nonprofit called Zip Zap Sop Enrichment. I'm actually a father of two children with special needs, and I have a really deep commitment to uh, working with kids with special needs. Um, I was a special education teacher for five years and I serve on a variety of different nonprofits. So a little bit about my background with social emotional learning. Uh, so one, like I mentioned, I co-founded a nonprofit that implements improv as a tool for social emotional learning. I, I developed a parent training component to kind of allow align with our improv curriculum. Uh, in my previous role as a teacher, I served on um, our safe and civil committee, which was really about implementing social emotional learning on our campus. And I co-developed a school restorative justice initiative. So that's a little bit about my background in this. But what is SEL? I, I want all of us here to kind of just, what do we think of when we hear the term social emotional learning? So I want to give everybody a second just to sort of Get an image in your head of what that term means. Just think about it for yourself. Okay. So here's the specific definition of SEL, right? It's a process through which all young people and adults acquire the knowledge and skills and attitudes to develop healthy identities, um, identify their emotions, achieve personal and collective goals, feel and show empathy for others, um, establish and maintain supportive relationships and make responsible and caring decisions. Why is this important? Well, SEL is really about educational equity in a way, right? It really is about making sure that we have authentic school and family community partnerships to establish learning environments and experiences that feature trusting collaborative relationships, rigorous and meaningful curriculum and instruction and ongoing evaluation. SEL can help address various forms of inequity and empower young people and adults to co-create thriving schools and contribute to safe, healthy, and just communities. And um, the note down there, castle.org, I'll give you a little bit of information in a, in a bit so you know where this is coming from. So I wanted to give you guys a brief history of SEL in a way. We've been having social learning in a way for millennia across different cultures. So I wanted a couple of examples are things like etiquette guides or rites of passage, right? Even things like military courtesies and customs, religious rites, sacraments or ceremonies. All of these are things are parts of social learning that have been taking place uh across different cultures so if you can think of any of those things right that that we've either heard about or experienced in some way or another this is all an example of social learning a, a group of people that have a common understanding of what sort of social things uh a child or an individual needs to learn to be part of that culture so i think the question that we have here is why is it important in schools well Students spend the majority of their daily lives in school and spend an average of 181 days out of the year in school. That's not counting things like summer school or after school programs or other things that might keep them on a school campus. Schools and teachers can incorporate social emotional learning in various ways, right? Not just one thing or another. There's so many different ways we can incorporate them in schools. And in particular, educators are trained in pedagogy, and that's the study of like how to teach to children, right? Um, and effective ways to deliver content to students. That's literally what teachers are taught. How do you teach kids, right? And tools that schools adopt generally must be data-driven and research-based. So we know that when a school district adopts an SEL program, there's usually some kind of research behind it, some kind of data that a school has already found that this kind of program has worked or has demonstrated you know, some kind of effectiveness. So what is it in school? Right. Well, let's show you. First, let's have a little overview of uh, SEL here in California. Right. The Department of Education has adopted a set of standards that are necessary skills around social emotional learning. 
In addition, our state has joined a, a collaborating states initiative. It's a group of states that share information and best practices and all kinds of stuff around building strong SEL in schools across different states. This is where uh, that note I gave you guys earlier, CASEL. This is the Collaborative for Academic, Social, and Emotional Learning, right? CASEL is basically the organization and, uh, that has come up with the standards, and we're going to go over what these standards are. So these are the standards or competencies as, as they're known, right? Um, they've developed this set of competencies that California and other states have adopted in order to direct their SEL learning, their implementation, and their actions. They're important for parents to have a common knowledge and shared language around how schools view and discuss SEL. So one of the things is kind of understanding this wheel um, and, and looking at like how schools even talk about SEL, because it's kind of a, a whole different language sometimes, right? And having that common language and vocabulary helps all of us parents really communicate with our teachers and administrators a little better. So if you look at the wheel, these are all these different five competencies and outside the wheel is all of these different ways we can implement SEL, right? In the classrooms, in schools, with families and caregivers and outside even in our communities. So I'm going to go through each one of these competencies just so you understand a little bit about them, right? So we have self-management, self-awareness, responsible decision-making, relationship skills, and social awareness. So self-awareness is really about the ability to understand our own emotions, our thoughts and values, and how they influence behavior across different contexts, right? So this includes the capacity to recognize our strengths and our challenges, as well as a well-grounded sense of confidence and purpose. So there's things like identifying our emotions or demonstrating honesty and integrity, um, examining prejudices and biases. All of these things are things that can be taught as competencies, right? Um, and this is, this is a part of self-awareness. Our next competency is self-management, and it's really the ability to manage our own emotions, our thoughts and behaviors in different situations and achieve goals and aspirations. This includes uh, the capacity to delay gratification, to manage our stress, and to feel motivation uh, to accomplish our personal collective goals. So things like uh, using and planning and organizational skills are things that we can consider in self-management, right? Setting personal and collective goals. All of these things are a part of SEL that, you know, we might think of as things that happen in a classroom, kids planning and organizational skills. This, this ties in with some of their academics. Our next one is responsible decision making, right? It's the ability to make caring and constructive choices about personal behavior and social interactions across diverse situations. So this includes things like uh, being able to consider ethical standards and safety concerns and to evaluate the benefits and consequences of various actions for our personal, social, and collective well-being. So things like demonstrating curiosity and open-mindedness, uh, identifying solutions for our personal and social problems, uh, reflecting on our role to promote our personal, family, and community well-being. These are all ways that we uh, learn about responsible decision-making. Relationship skills. Now, this is one that I think when I saw this, like, how, why is this important in a classroom? But this relationship skills is really the ability to establish and maintain healthy and supportive relationships and to effectively navigate settings with diverse individuals and groups. This includes the capacity to communicate, clearly listen, actively cooperate, work collaboratively to problem solve and negotiate conflict constructively, uh, navigate settings with different social and cultural demands, and opportunities, uh, provide leadership, and seek or offer help when need, needed. So this is really about individuals developing positive relationships, demonstrating cultural competency, which means understanding other cultures, resolving positive, you know, resol resolving conflicts in a positive way. So these are all things that are essential to creating a, a healthy school environment, um, which is when I read this to me really kind of resonated to why it's important to have this in a school setting. Finally, social awareness. This is uh, the ability to understand perspectives of and empathize with others. 
including those from diverse backgrounds, cultures, and contexts. This includes the capacity to feel compassion for others, understand broader historical and social norms for behavior in different settings, and recognize family, school, and community resources for support. So things like recognizing strengths in others, demonstrating empathy and compassion, showing concern for the feelings of others, understanding and expressing gratitude, identifying diverse social norms, including unjust ones. So having people really understand diverse cultures, especially in communities like ours, where we have such diversity is a great tool to give uh, our students. So some of the benefits of implementing SEL in the classroom, right, now that we've looked at all of the different competencies is one is um, it can help with making connections with students, right? It can help with creating emotionally safe classrooms, creating a teacher student social bond, being flexible with the social skills needed in the moment, right? Encouraging the social growth of all learners, uh, improved attitudes towards school. I mean, we want our kids to be really motivated to go to school. It can help with reducing stress and promoting positive mental health outcomes. And just kind of one note, right? Sometimes when we think of social emotional learning, we kind of lump it in with mental health and they're very different things, right? Um, but social emotional learning can really help towards our mental health outcomes for all of our individuals, all of our kids. So what does it actually look like? Right. And, and one of the things I wanted to mention is that it's not just one thing. What I what I gave you guys is just sort of the set of standards and competencies around what schools have to do for SEL. But it can take the shape of a variety of programs, interventions or classroom practices. So here's here's a few examples, things like second step, uh, positivity project, even athletics uh, can be a form of social emotional learning. Uh, Challenge Success is a program we have here in the district. Uh, PBIS, which is a positive behavior intervention supports improv for social learning, kind of like the program that I run. Um, even some direct instruction on social learning is, is a part of this. Uh, social skills classes that are specific to having kids learn social skills. Things as simple as like classroom check-ins that teachers could do in a classroom, journal writing, or even helping ch children build a social emotional vocabulary. All of these things and many more are ways that we can incorporate social emotional learning in the classroom. These are just a few examples. So now you're probably asking, so what? We've, we've gone through all these competencies. How is this gonna help, right? So I want us to go back to the wheel, right? And, and let's zoom in, right? So we look at how this is implemented across all of these different areas. And, and we are the families and caregivers, right? So what is this gonna benefit us as families and as caregivers of, of students in these classrooms? Well, there's some ways for us to kind of get involved, right? We can now ask, right? What is our district plan for social emotional learning and how can I learn more? What is my student school doing to implement SEL and how can I support it at home? What are the SEL practices that my student's teacher has implemented in the classroom and how can I reinforce them, right? It can change our parent-teacher conferences, right? When parents have an understanding of SEL competencies, we can ask more pointed and important questions. For example, instead of asking how my kid is doing, how are my kid's organizational skills, right? Uh, we have a more specific kind of set of vocabulary and understanding around this, right? What subject is my child good at? Where is my child showing the most curiosity and why, right? Now we have a few more pointed questions, right? Is my student making friends? Is my student developing positive relationships with anyone, right? Um, it's a very different question around uh, friendships or social interactions. I'll give you a personal example from the last parent-teacher conference I had uh, for my son is, you know, I, I asked how my son was doing and everybody said, fine, okay. And then um, I, I started to ask questions about sort of his social and behavioral things. And I asked, you know, is my son asking for help just because I know how my son is sometimes. And then it was, I got more direct answers and I got a better understanding of, oh yeah, I need to work on that with my son at home to teach him to ask for help and to reach out to adults, right? And it's those kind of simple things that can kind of help us and 
and help our students, right, learn better and have better relationships and interactions with schools. So helping everyone serve our children. So our, our SEL competencies really just provide teachers, parents, and administrators, and service providers a common language, right, to share information and discuss what's best for our children. Being able to provide insight to teachers and service providers helps to create genuine partnerships and effective collaborative relationships with schools. So as I leave you guys, um, here's a few resources that you can look at the uh, California Department of Education SELs page. You can look at Castle's website and they give you a lot of great information on SEL. Um, and they also have a lot of information on how you can implement it both in the classroom, at home, different things. The Social Emotional Learning Alliance for California has some great information as well. And finally, uh, PBS Learning Media has a great number of videos on all of these different competencies that you can look at. So thank you guys all for being here and I hope uh, I was able to share some great information.